Well, welcome back, and guess what? This is it. This is the final lecture in our series for this class, and what I'm going to do in this lecture is review what we've learned, and lest you be tempted to tune out, I am going to talk about a couple of things slightly differently than we talked about them in class, and they may help you with your understanding of some of these concepts, so stay with me. Okay, so let's go through what we covered in this class. First of all, Qualitative research is a method of inquiry that tends to be inductive rather than deductive, although it, it can be deductive, but inductive means that we start from observation and then build towards theory, whereas deductive means that we start with hypothesis or theory and then look for evidence to support what we're looking for. So qualitative research tends to be more inductive rather than deductive, but, you know, not always, just most of the time. Qualitative research is a method of inquiry that tends to be based on observation rather than on statistics and experiment. And again, you know, we use qualitative research a lot of times to support these other styles of research that we do. We're not looking for causal relationships. We're not looking for um, statistics that can describe the population. We're really looking for depth of understanding. And that's our third point here, though. It's focused on depth of understanding rather than generalization. We're looking to be able to talk about individuals and how individuals think and feel rather than to apply uh, those viewpoints to a broad population. <clears throat> Qualitative research is a method of inquiry that tends to be comprised of varied, customizable methods rather than more rigid approaches. And I, I mention that because a lot of what we learn in qualitative research has been very much built around um, four central methods, which we're going to review in a minute. But there's so much variation in how those methods can be used that they sometimes become almost indistinguishable even within the same method category. So just keep in mind that with quantitative research and causal research or experimental research, you typically, the, the ideas might be different, but the mechanisms are pretty similar. In qualitative research, though, it tends to be a lot more varied and customizable to the questions that you're asking. Qualitative research is based on a more post-positivist approach, which is the truth is governor, governed by the observer, rather than the more classical empirical positivist one, which is that truth is inherent in the observation. We talked about this in our first lecture series. And I do want you to remember, what we're doing in qualitative research has a basis in science. It is science. And if you use it properly, it should help you to apply the scientific method properly. But our perspective tends to be that um, the person that we're interviewing or the, the person who's doing the observation has an influence on the truth that we're going to glean. And, and that's important because when we take things and put them together, there's often going to be a lot of nuance to the truth that we uncover. And qualitative research is going to expose us to that a lot more than quantitative research is. Quantitative, or qualitative research is less rigorous than quantitative research, but it's more likely to provide a groundswell of insight if analyzed properly. And that's grounded theory is one of the things we talked about in our um, sixth lecture series. And grounded theory is a way that we can kind of get those insights directly from the data rather than from preconceived notions that we have. Okay, I want you to remember as well this chart that I built for you. Qualitative research has four basic applications, and those um, depend on how familiar the researcher is with a topic and how familiar a participant is with a topic. So if you have low familiarity with a topic, but you think participants have a little bit more, you're going to do exploration. If you have high familiarity and you think participants have high familiarity as well, you're going to do a deep dive. If you think participants have a low familiarity with a topic and you have a high familiarity with it, you're generally going to be doing testing. And that's a lot of times going to be in the context of they haven't had a chance to become familiar with what it is you're testing. And then if, if, if both you and the participant have low familiarity with a topic, you're going to be looking for ideas. So idea generation is going to be your application. And these are the four basic applications of qualitative research. Now, can you use qualitative research for other things? Sure, but these are generally what your studies are going to revolve around, one of these four areas. Qualitative research has four basic methods of primary data collection as well, and we talked about these in class. These are observational research, in-depth interviews, focus groups, and ethnographic research. Observational research comes in disguised or undisguised formats. It can be on-site or off-site. If you have a, a streaming video or video recordings, things like that, it can be off-site. Um, on-site means that you're actually there, and it could be active or passive, and these are terms that I'm going to use here. Uh, we may have used different terms when we've talked about them before, but active is when you ask questions, and passive is when you just observe and you don't ask any questions. 
And, you know, again, the questions are not going to be as deep as you would ask in an ethnography, but you might ask people, why did you do that? Explain that to me. In-depth interviews come in four flavors, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, and informal. Uh, In-depth interviews are most often administered person to person, but they're sometimes administered on the phone or via a, a computer. <clears throat> Focus groups come in traditional telephone, online video camera, and online message board formats. And typically, they're going to either be held, if they are being held in a traditional manner, in a facility or on site. Um, in facility means in a research facility that's designated for qualitative research, and on site means that you're, you're going to be somewhere that's local for the participants that doesn't require them to come to a research facility. You're going to have to set it up to be kind of like a research facility, but generally you're not going to do focus groups in people's homes or in their offices or things like that. You're going to require them to come somewhere. And then ethnographic research, uh, the methods vary widely and it, depending on the ethnographer, there are all kinds of different ways of conducting ethnography, but they are often accompanied by some form of videography. And in fact, I think the most common way I've seen ethnography reported has been with videography of some sort, uh, showing some real uh, key points about how people think and feel about things. Qualitative data analysis involves organizing data into a re readable body of work from which you can obtain insights. So most often what we're going to do is translate any qualitative data that we've collected into text to analyze and then becoming familiar with those data helps to discover initial insights so you can become familiar either by reviewing all of the uh, recordings that you made or by actually taking those and translating them into text and then reading it methods such as grounded theory can help apply rigor to additional insight generation and grounded theory is probably the most uh, well respected of the different qualitative uh, approaches for analysis, but there certainly are others if it's not your thing. Um, using text-based analysis tr uh, tends to help uncover patterns and trends, and that's where you know we look at the text that we've generated and conduct analyses uh, to look for patterns and trends. One of the methods that we might use for that is coding and categorization, which can help to find the structure within the data and. If you look at the videos that we put up, we talked a lot about coding, and I even put up three different styles of coding that you can use in Lecture Series 6. There's also something called CACDAS software, uh, which can sometimes uncover additional insights if used properly. And I, I think the most useful thing for CACDAS is when it's able to find um, uh, trends that occur at the beginning and end of keywords. So you can say, these words tend to lead into the keyword and these words tend to follow the keywords in, in, in trends. That's kind of useful. It's hard to tell that um, from a per in-person analysis. Pardon the technical glitch here. Okay, point five is that qualitative reporting is as much about presenting data as it is about data-driven storytelling. So remember that story is what audiences remember best, and it helps them to connect to the abstract nature of the research. Context is a useful tool provided that the research that goes with it is not overshadowed. Personas can be identified through qualitative research, and stories about them can be shared to differentiate segments and attitudes. And if you tell a really good story that has characters in it, you can use these personas to kind of represent the different types of people that you talk to. Be careful to use quotes illustratively to represent themes and not to cherry pick interesting outliers. And this is a real danger when you're doing storytelling in particular. It's always fun to talk about the people that say the interesting kind of out there stuff, but not that's necessarily representative of what you heard. And one example I'll give is we were doing some concept testing one time and we were testing a concept about uh, neurology. And there was a guy who when we asked him, what, what, what comes to mind when you think about the term brain surgery, he shouted, holy Christ! And that was really memorable and really exciting and really interesting, but it wasn't representative. So uh, while we joked about it, it wasn't part of our reporting. Point six, qualitative research is a light in the darkness, helping us to make sense of the shapes and shadows off in the distance. This is what we have been saying since early on in this course used improperly can lead us to false conclusions. If you use qualitative research badly, you will probably come up with uh, data that are not very good or useful. And the only way to really know if your data are real or not is to validate through other methods, especially through quantitative research. 
Used well, it can help us to see things that weren't immediately obvious before. It can help us to understand the world around us differently. And remember that very often uh, qualitative research can be used to cut through uh, uh, information overload that comes from doing too much quantitative research. Very often when you hear about companies or brands making major changes in what they're doing, it's because they had been conducting a lot of surveys. The surveys showed that things were going great. And then they did some focus groups to find out why things didn't seem to be as great as they thought. And they got one or two insights that really shook them up and caused them to really change what they were doing. So uh, qualitative research can be tremendously useful in that. And it can also help you to just ensure that what you're seeing off in the distance, what that shape or shadow that that looks so different when your perceptions pick it up, that you really understand what it is. And with that said, I want to leave you with this picture. This is um, yet another picture from the stock photo archives that I've been using for this lecture. And I really like this picture because this is this is a kind of a, a way of thinking about qualitative research. You know, look at the way that this light is shown in this photograph and how we can see the shadows going on around it. We can see the brilliance uh, of, of, of the circle and, and what it's encircling, but we can also see kind of the context around it. There's some kind, of, some kind of fence or something in the background. There's some kind of guy sitting there with an umbrella. Um, there's some kind of magnificent spectacle that's going on. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's just fun to look at. And it leaves us with a sense of wonder. It makes us want to tell stories about it. It makes us want to think about what's really being done there. And that's ultimately how I feel about qualitative research when it's done properly. It's exciting. It's interesting. It creates something memorable. It provides information that are more than just printouts on a data sheet. It's something that really can stick with you and, and be a big part of what you take going forward. With that said, I hope that you have enjoyed this class. I hope that you've gotten a lot out of these lectures. And I want to continue to be a resource to you however I can. So the end of every lecture, I put my email address, and that's because it is there for you to use. Please email me anytime at this email address. Don't use my school email address because I don't check it when I'm not teaching. This is my professional email address. I check it every day. <laughs> so please uh, continue to correspond with me. Let me know what you think. And whether you've been a student in my SAUE class or you've been watching these lectures on YouTube and want to learn more about qualitative research, I'm always happy to talk with you and answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching, and please keep doing great research.